Good afternoon, everyone. This is Brandon Doyle from Blue Corona here. We got a few people still joining us for this afternoon's webinar. So sit back, we'll get started um, in about a minute or two. Just let some last minute people join and then we'll, we'll get underway. We appreciate you taking your time out of your day to join us. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, we're here today to talk about OTT advertising and really learn how over-the-top advertising has helped local businesses grow their leads and sales, create more brand lift online, um, and help you achieve some of your growth goals. We wanna thank you for joining us today. A couple of administrative pieces to get out of the way before we get started here. Uh, we will have time at the end to answer any questions that you may have for us about OTT advertising. So if you do have questions throughout today's webinar, feel free to click the little triangle next to the word questions in your GoToWebinar panel. And you can type in those questions at any time. You don't have to save them for the end. We don't want you to forget about your questions from earlier in the presentation. So if a question pops in your head, go ahead and hit that triangle next to questions, type it in. And again, we'll do our best to answer any, any and all questions here at the conclusion of today's webinar. A little bit about Blue Corona for those of you who may be unfamiliar with us. Uh, we are a home services digital marketing agency. So everything from SEO, pay-per-click, web design, and now OTT advertising, uh, one of our newer services that we're super proud to sh share with you today. We were founded in 2008 originally as a tracking and analytics company uh, with two office locations, one in Maryland and one in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, have about 80 full-time employees employees and almost 400 clients and those clients range from anywhere from about two million dollars in revenue to upwards of two billion dollars in revenue we're also a nine-time inc honoree and a member of the inc hall of fame and we have several partnerships that help us help you achieve your goals as a business owner uh, Google Premier Partnership, that's one we're extremely proud of. That puts us in the top 3% of marketing agencies that are a Google partner here in North America, as well as several other organizations um, that are really popular in the home services industry. Everyone from Service Titan to Nexstar to the ACCA, the Air Conditioning Contractors of America, as well as YouTube and Nextdoor and some other partnerships as well, like Facebook and Twitter. So. Um, today, I'm joined by Carrie Wheeler, and again, my name is Brandon Doyle. I'm the marketing manager here, but Carrie's going to be doing a lot of the talking today and really sharing her expertise on OTT advertising. What is it? How does it work? How do you measure OTT advertising? And most importantly, what can it do for your business? Thanks for joining us today, Carrie. We're excited to have you. Thanks, Brandon. I'm excited to be here, excited to talk about OTT with you guys. So we will go ahead and get started. So the first question that you guys might have is what is OTT? You know, you might have heard the phrase before, it's very popular these days, very trendy. So OTT actually stands for over the top advertising and that means it's over the top of television or broadcast. Um, and it basically is a platform or collection of platforms that you consume programming on like TVs, movies, sports, live TV, newscasts, things like that. 
and you view it through a connected TV, a Roku, a gaming console, and you can also view it through your computers. So many of us use it in everyday life. We just don't realize that it actually has the label of OTT. Really moving into the OTT platform, the great thing about OTT is it is it has the same properties as a digital platform, but it has the strength of a broadcast platform. And what that means is we can pull an extreme amount of data over the OTT platforms on our audiences, and we can use that in a mass media sense to really push some more into our sales funnels when we're looking at a lead gen type of source. So in broadcast, you can, you know, put it out to the masses and pull in some of that audience share. And in OTT, you can do the same thing, but it's very uh, different in the fact that we, we can target specific people at specific times. It's a little different uh, mentality than appointment viewing. So really, this is to depict the two pieces of OTT that are really strong the market share availability. So we can look at any market in the United States and some markets outside of the United States and say, okay, if I wanted to be in front of this type of consumer that has these behavioral targets, how much of that is out there? So we can look at a market share availability. Um, due to the pandemic, the market share has increased astronomically this past year. So we have seen record high, record high numbers in streaming services. So it has the strength to be able to get to a large audience that's very engaged. And the second piece of it is the audience data. So we basically handpick a specific audience group to be in front of for this platform. And we do that because we can, using the data that we pull off of our campaigns, say, okay, this is the exact person that is about to need my services. And so we can get in front of those people on a mass scale. So there are three steps to really how OTT impacts digital marketing. The first step is really the audience targeting. So when we look at audience targeting, we literally say, what audience can I get in front of that we can be very strategic to push them to need our services? A lot of us are in the home remodeling, home services type of arenas where it's more of a need base, not a want. And so sometimes we have to push in our own audience to get them to urge to act. And that's where audience targeting comes in. So as an example, we can you know, target a audience based on all kinds of different metrics and we'll get into that, but we can be very, very specific in who we want to see our ad versus just a volume quality, quantity. The second piece of it is really the media layering piece. So OTT is a great platform to really supplement the digital marketing aspects. So obviously in the digital marketing realm, you're creating lead gen out of a need basis. And the nice thing about OTT, and we'll talk about how this layers in, but we can be very strategic in putting that audience right in front of us when they're going to need us very, very soon. And then the last piece of it, of course, the, the blue corona way of data and results. So we measure every inch of this campaign, and it's not just a measurement of impressions or website traffic, the typical people, so the typical things that get measured when you run some type of uh, media uh, strategy, we measure things that are most important to you guys, which of course is leads, and we look at brand lift as well. So those are metrics that we'll dive into a little bit, but that's how we measure the success of our campaigns. So the first piece of it is the audience targeting. We've touched upon this a little bit, but the, the audience targeting is really one of the most important factors of the OTT and what makes the OTT kind of special in the world of marketing. So, we have extreme, extremely granular uh, data when it's looking at the audience targeting. So we can target by zip code, we can target by radius, we've targeted by intersection if you wanted to be that granular. But we also know a lot about our audience. We can tell what type of home they live in, we can tell what's on the outside of their home, we can tell if they're getting ready to do a home remodel, we can, um, 
look at if they wear glasses or contacts. We can tell if they play golf, if they only buy luxury cars. There's so many different ways that we can slice and dice this audience. And it's not just the typical, oh, it's a homeowner or their income level or they have kids. We do have those pieces of it, but we also have such a high level of data into the audience. And that's what makes our campaign is really unique because we pull out these very extreme granular pieces of data, we collect this audience together, and then we create this really cherry picked audience that we know needs our services, whether they're in market to buy a home and move, whether they're in market to redo a kitchen, or they know they need to replace their air conditioner or have their plumbing upgraded, we can target them based on those behavioral targets. So we literally are positioning ourselves right in front of a consumer, right before they start the evaluation period of the process. The second piece of it, as we talked about, is the media layering. So as we can see here, there's a lot of, you know, uh, services that are right above a, a lead generation, SEO, PPC, GLSA, those are all things that Blue Corota does and has done for many years to provide lead gen to our clients. But OTT really gets layered right on top of that. And, and part of that is because we know the audience is in need of our services. No matter how granular, there is a way to find an audience that is in need of the service. And so we pretty much layer that right on top of the lead gen because you're basically saying, and I use the analogy all the time, if you were gonna come home on a Friday and you didn't wanna cook dinner, for your kids and then you saw a pizza delivery commercial for free, you literally just solved the problem you didn't even know you had yet. And that's really what OTT does. It gets in front of the consumer and it says, hey, I know that you need to upgrade your plumbing or I know that you're looking at a home remodel. Let me introduce myself, company X, Y, and Z. And you start to get in front of them and that really creates them, you know, pushes them towards that evaluation period. And so the last piece is really the data and results piece. So a couple of things that I want to make sure I explain pretty thoroughly. Obviously, the first thing we look at is website traffic, and that is pretty standard for OTT across the board. Any OTT vendor or provider would look at increases to website traffic and trends in that nature. And that is something that we do look at as well. But being Blue Corona and know that we are just driven by data every single day, we take it three steps further. So the first thing that we really look at is we look at what our lead increases are. And specifically because we know you know we'll have a client that'll trend a 10 or 15 or 20 percent increase on leads year over year and then we implement ott and we see oh there was a bump of 40 percent or 50 percent so we know specifically that the leads are impacted by the ott and there's a lot of different ways that we measure that but we look at lead by lead in a literal hand count of that the second piece of it is brand lift. And so what we do with brand lift is we are specifically looking for people that have engaged with your brand. And the reason we do that is because we know that we've gotten in front of them, we've introduced ourselves as company X, Y, and Z, and now we know they're Googling company X, Y, and Z. So we have many different metrics that we put into this. It's a multi-layered approach. And we specifically look at, okay, if they were you know, going out to dinner, are they looking for Outback Steakhouse or are they looking for Steakhouse near me? So that's really how we depict the OTT success is looking to see, okay, we've gained this much traction year over year, month over month with a brand lift scenario, knowing that people are now seeking us out and want to work with us versus just looking for our services. And the last piece of it uh, is a little bit tricky and can be a little bit scary for people for guys that are uh, a little sensitive to having their information tracked or shared. So we use IP attribution. And what that means is if we served an ad to a person and they went to our site, we can track that. So we can say, this person was served the ad, this person went to your site to convert and give you a call. And we literally hand count those every single month for every client to make sure that we're showing the people actually coming out of the campaign. And it's interesting because of, 
you know, the data that can be shared and the information that we can obtain. Some people get a little weirded out. Okay, well now you're, you know, you know what I'm doing. And it's basically just aligned to your IP address. So we do use IP attribution um, to be basically the last layer of our success of the campaign. We make sure all of these metrics are within industry standards, and then we use that IP attribution to actually count the conversions coming out of the campaign. So here, to show you guys a case study, so we have a case study home services in Pennsylvania. Um, we've had 177% direct website traffic increase of 54% in leads overall while running OTT. We've counted 159 unique visitors with our IP attribution model, and we've had 124% brand lift while running OTT. And the one thing I really love about this chart is you can specifically tell exactly when we started the program. Um, and these results just speak to that. So this is a um, case study that I wanted to share with you guys and some of the great results that we've seen with this product. So the second one, home services in Utah, we've had a 228% direct website traffic, 75% increase in leads while running OTT, 260 visitors uh, attributed to the campaign in a three month run. And we've had 143% brand lift while running OTT. And again, another scenario where you can literally see and tell exactly where we ran the campaign. So one of the things about OTT is, you know, everyone says the three letters OTT and they think that all OTT is the same and they think that all OTT is, is very similar to cable and it is very, very different. So wanted to go through some of the differentiators between each platform to, to share why they're so different and, and what that means for you guys. So the first thing about cable TV, it is appointment viewing. So it means that somebody has to be in front of their television at 6.30 at night to watch Fixer Upper on HGTV. You buy a piece of inventory, a 30 second spot, and you're hoping to be in that in front of the person that you're looking for. So you're buying a, a 30 second time slot, not by person, just by inventory purposes. So the reason why this is such a, um, big deal is because when you're buying that 30 second time slot, you only kind of know how many people are watching. You don't really know. So you're just buying the 30 seconds and hoping you're getting in front of the person where in OTT, it's a guarantee. So you're buying a specific amount of 30 second inventories. It's just not one. Um, and the reason why that's important is when you're looking at appointment viewing, versus streaming appointment viewing again you're trying to get in front of that person at a specific time and you don't really know how many people are watching so the cost per thousand on a cable commercial versus a ott ad can vary um, the typical cost per thousand in cable is 80 to 120 dollars so i always use the old adage if you you know had a thousand people in the room would you pay $80 to talk to them, or would you pay 40 or 20? Um, so it makes a big difference in that sense because it's understanding that you don't really know who's watching. And because cable is so granular and so diversified, you, you're not guaranteeing that you're getting in front of the audience that you want to get in front of. The impressions are not guaranteed. So it's just projected. We don't really know, you know, the cable companies will say, oh, well, we know it's this many people. We know it's that many people. They don't really have the data to track that. They use projections in each market. So you don't know if you're getting in front of that uh, consumer or not. Um, and the difference is with OTT, you literally buy it by eyeballs. So you're buying it by impression volume. If you have you know, you want to reach 50,000 people, you will reach exactly 50,000 people. If you want 100,000, you can reach 100,000 people. You're only paying for the audience you want. So you're literally cherry picking out each person that you want 
versus just showing it at a 30 second time slot and whoever sees it sees it and you know that's just how it goes there's no projection there you get the guaranteed amount regardless so it's not a you know you bought a 30 second spot and you think 300 people are watching and really it's 200 or you think 2000 people are watching and it's really 500 it can really vary that much with ott it's literally exactly what you pay for and you can decide how much of that market share you want to take and the last piece of it is the limited data so i've heard um, from different cable companies. I've actually spoken to many reps over the years where they're like, oh, you know, we can do it, we can zone it. And that's their favorite word in the world is we can zone it. Um, and we can see homeowners and we know that they have higher incomes, but they don't really have the type of data that we use for OTT. So it's a very different data pool and they can't be as granular so when we're talking granular like picking a house because there's brick on the outside or picking a house because they have a pool um, those are very specific pieces that if you're a you know a foundation company or a company that works on pools or does pool maintenance those things really matter and being in front of 500 people that you know could or could not have a pool versus 500 people that you know for sure has a pool when you're selling pool services it's a no-brainer you know exactly that's your audience and that's who you're going after so there's a big difference between the two ott is whenever people are watching it doesn't matter we don't we don't care what they're watching it can be you know 100 different places but we're after that person where cable is you bought this one spot in this one channel and you're hoping that the audience that you want is watching that spot so it's a very different type of scenario you're not basing it on inventory you're basing it on the audience specifically The second piece of it is uh, understanding the difference between OTT vendors. So this is something that I've come across with uh, many, many, many times um, in my lifetime in media. So there's a lot of little trips and uh, trips, tricks and tips that we have that we notice that other OTT vendors will do. One of the things that I see a lot. Um, and probably at least once a week, is you will buy OTT, and I use that with air quotes, because you're buying OTT, but it's really mixed with pre-roll and display. And the reason why they do that is because they can give you a quote unquote lower price because they've rolled in things that are cheaper and you don't know what you're paying for. So I had a client that just last week, I looked at her reports, and she was paying for 10% OTT, but paying 100% OTT fee. So you can imagine how she felt when we went through and I pointed out, this is not OTT, this is pre-roll, this is display. It's a very different platform. Pre-roll and display are much higher up in the funnel. Um, so they definitely go by volume. They're not as granular as OTT. Um, and it's a, a much lower CPM or cost per thousand. So it's a different scenario. Where Blue Corona, we only use long episodic content. And what that means is it's TV shows, it's movies, it's not you know watching a five minute YouTube prank video. Um, it's something that somebody watches um, all the way through. So video completion rate uh, in our OTT platform is 97% plus. We usually see 99%. And that means that the person watched the entire ad and was engaged with it. So that's one of the things and probably one of the biggest offenses that we see out of traditional OTT vendors is they will mix those things together and still charge the OTT price. The second thing is the limited targeting to basic parameters. So a lot of OTT vendors will say, oh, we can target by zip code and we can do incomes and we can do you know, house value or if they have children. Well, that is great, um, but it's a lot different to say, oh, I can target somebody by their income or I can target engineers or I can target IT decision makers. 
or I can be an eye doctor and target people that wear glasses. Um, it's a completely different scenario. And so those audiences are really driven by the data that we put together to create them. So it's a really important distinction between, you know, buying a, a group of people that's a it seems a little bit cheaper, but you have, you know, you're targeting the area you want and you know that they make the kind of money that you want. But if you're an eye doctor, wouldn't you rather pay for the people that have glasses than pay for a group of people that doesn't? So the audience and the data behind the audience is really, really important. Traditionally, a lot of OTT vendors will also buy volume. So they will buy a large volume of something and you know, people will buy that volume and it's little to no result because they didn't pick the audience. You know, they bought by a region and they said, oh, well, if they have a household income of X, those are the people that I want. And then it didn't produce results because they didn't get in front of the specific audience that they needed to reach their goals. So it's a lot different to get in front of somebody that needs a pair of glasses and you say, hey, you can buy glasses from us and here's why you should versus somebody that doesn't need glasses and you're just doing it in a volume sense and they've seen your spot 10 times now. So there's a humongous difference between just buying a volume and a lot of times I'll hear clients say, well, I tried it and it didn't work. Well, you tried it and it didn't work because we didn't focus on the things that are really important to meet your goals and we didn't get in front of that unique customer that needs you. And so the last thing is really the results are shown as traffic peaks and volume. So one of the things that we talked about in the beginning was we looking at website traffic and increases to impressions. Obviously something that we track as well, but that is what, you know, a lot of OTT vendors will say, okay, we serve this many impressions and here's what it did to your traffic where we are going through multiple levels of results. And most importantly, leads. We're saying, okay, we started this campaign and you went from gaining you know, 10% leads month over month to 75%. There's a very definitive line between you know, showing an increase in volume or traffic versus an increase in actual people. When you take a client who you know, was making outbound calls and now is a month a month out scheduled, it's a much different scenario than looking at traffic peaks and volume versus these are the jobs and this is what we have on the board. So there's a lot of differences between the two, but those are the most common that I really see with OTT vendors because a lot of people will say, oh, well, we have OTT or everyone has OTT. Well, not all OTT is created equal. So it's more of an understanding of what you're um, looking to buy and help move the needle forward. Awesome, Carrie. That was great. We appreciate you sharing your expertise on OTT. I didn't know uh, you could target people who wear glasses only. That that level of targeting is pretty wild. <laughs> it's kind of fun finding out all the layers that we can find out about people, but also a little scary being a consumer myself. <laughs> Of course. So, folks, we appreciate you uh, joining us here today. Um, if you have a question for Carrie about OTT advertising, now's the time to ask it. Um, and we did have a few questions come in along the way as well, Carrie. Um, but before we dive into questions, um, if you're not a Blue Corona client today and you're interested in partnering with us, uh, we'd be happy to have that conversation with you. Um, you can feel free to give us a call, whether you have, you're have you having issues with your OTT advertising and a lack of results there, or you know maybe your SEO or pay-per-click campaigns aren't performing up to snuff. Um, especially now as we enter the, the busy season for many home service companies over the summer. So feel free to give us a call. And if you are a Blue Corona client and you're interested in learning more about OTT uh, specifically, um, feel free to email Carrie at cwheeler at bluecorona.com, or you can reach out to your account manager or account director. Um, all of them will be able to help you answer any questions you have about OTT and explore if OTT is the right strategy to add to your digital marketing campaigns. So folks, continue sending in those questions. Thank you for those who have asked questions already. Uh, Carrie, we do have a couple, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. Um, John wants to know how we make a video for OTT, uh, for an OTT ad if they don't have one. Um, and does Blue Corona make those videos for their clients or how does that process work, Carrie? Absolutely, thanks for asking. So 
a lot of clients ask, well, how do I get a video? I've never done video before, or how do I obtain a video? So what we do is we really start from scratch on the video content creation, and that's something that we help you with along the way. So we will do a creative meeting, and I'll kind of talk with you about what your unique value proposition is, how you'd want to be in front of that client or customer, I should say. And then we talk about the video creation. We do all of the content pieces are on our side, so we help we write the script for you, we get the approval on that, and then we do the production for you. And that's all part of what we do to ensure that your messaging really resonates from OTT all the way down the funnel. And that is something that we handle from soup to nuts. So if it's something that you haven't done before or thought about, and don't be overwhelmed by the video content piece of it, that part is a lot easier than it seems to be. Awesome. Thanks, Carrie. Another question here. Um, how much should I spend on o OTT advertising per month? Do you have a recommendation? Yeah, so that really depends on your goals and the market. So if you have really lofty goals, obviously there's going to be more market share that we would need to obtain. And so what we do is we really look at what the available market share is for what you're after. So if you are after, I have a client that does only high-end home remodels and it's only in a five mile radius of his office. And so when we pulled market share, there was only 50,000 impressions available for the very unique audience he was after. And so in that scenario, I would recommend that he takes the whole market share. It's not a lot of people, um, but it's definitely his exact audience. But sometimes we'll pull market share and there's literally millions of impressions available. You know, if you're in Chicago or Detroit or somewhere like that, where there's a lot more market share, then we kind of dive into, well, where do we specifically want to be and grow that audience? So it really depends on what your goals are and we can kind of tailor to what the impressions are in that sense. Carrie, Kendall wants to know if you can just clarify uh, brand lift a little bit for us. Yeah, of course. So brand lift is a measurement of a consumer engaging with your brand. And what that means is they are specifically seeking you out versus your services. So let's say that I have um, an AC repair that I need to have done. I can look for AC repair or I can look for Carrie's HVAC company. So we measure how many people are looking for Carrie's HVAC company. And we do that on multiple layers to see exactly where those sources are coming from and how they're getting to us. But we measure that. So we say, okay, well, at this time last year, you know, 100 people were looking for you. And now at this time this year, 200 people are looking for you. Very round numbers to make a point. But that's really what we look at to see how well your brand is going into the market and what type of um, pull it's receiving in return. And Jim wants to know, Carrie, um, are there any concerns over the app tracking transparency uh, conversation that's happening right now? I'm sure a lot of people have seen that in the news, um, specifically with the new iOS 14 updates around privacy um, and, and any affected usage of cookies. Can you talk to the app tracking transparency and if that's going to um, impact any OTT advertising campaigns? Yeah, of course. So we've gotten this question a lot in the past couple of weeks and people are a little bit nervous about how we can use those properties. So the nice thing about it is, you know, it doesn't it doesn't have such a large impact that you think it would. It seems like a really big deal, but it's such a tiny tiny percent of the market share that our you know, it's affecting. And so it has an impact in any of our campaigns, but a lot of our campaigns are run and, and, and uh, where they, we know everything about you, but we don't know who you are, right? Like you can know everything about me, but you wouldn't know my name is Carrie. Um, so it goes by, you know, that, that, um, kind of smoke screen of name and those personal identifiers. And so that's what kind of helps us out in that sense, but we don't, uh, anticipated making such a large swing because even though there is a lot of concern over privacy and things that are changing and you know we've all noticed that we have to adapt to cookies and those kinds of things it's not impacting our digital pieces as much as you would think because most of the time people you know don't 
invest that much thought into it. You know, if you have to accept cookies or some type of tracking, for me personally, I would rather do that because I'd rather have things that are tailored to me specifically than generically. Um, and a lot of people feel that way. And so we really have not seen, you know, it's less than 1% of the impact that we would expect. And just to build on that um, there, Carrie, thank you. Um, Jim, I'm not sure if you're a Blue Corona client or not, but if you are, the good news is, is the way that we have been able to set up our tracking across all of our digital marketing campaigns, that includes Facebook advertising, um, that includes Google ads and, and Microsoft ads, things like that, um, our tracking is not impacted at all either by the app tracking transparency or iOS 14.5 update that you're referencing there, Jim. So uh, a long-winded way to say uh, no, not at this time. Barry, we do have a few more questions here. Um, Melissa would like to know if OTT is better as um, a campaign to run either during the peak or non-peak seasons of, of their business, or is it really more of an all-year strategy? Yeah, that's a great question. And I get this question a lot because so many of our home services clients are very seasonal. And so my recommendation is always that we adjust per season. So we do run it most of the year. There's not a lot of times that we will completely take it down because we are trying to make a more robust marketing funnel in the middle. So you never want to cut that off, right? Because that's your planning period, you know, in the next couple of weeks to months. So typically what we do is when we look at peak seasons for clients, we will scale back in a, in a peak season, in an extreme peak season, peak month, um, but we won't remove completely. So we adjust as the time goes. We kind of say, okay, the market share is X. You know, for the non-peak, we want to be this percentage of the market share. And then for the peak, we want to be a much lower percentage. So that way we can adjust to demand. Um, but we never say, just turn it off because we are trying to create a more robust marketing funnel and we wanna make sure that we're always pushing more in in the middle sense. So Carrie, that's kind of similar to another question we have here. Um, um, a gentleman was saying that he owns a plumbing company which isn't as seasonal as something maybe like HVAC or you know remodeling where you, know, you gotta get that work done in the summer months. Um, what about for like a plumbing company or maybe just businesses that aren't as seasonal? Do you still recommend, you know, keeping that on all year round? Yes, absolutely. So interesting about plumbing is we can actually target um, consumers that need plumbing updates and issues, which is new data that we've just started working on um, and testing out. So very exciting for our plumbing guys in the industry. But we do recommend that you run it all year round. There will be times where you know, we might make adjustments and we can, we're very nimble in the sense of making adjustments as you have appointments booked. Um, but it's definitely something that you implement. You know, we would never do SEO for one month and then not do it the next month because we're trying to continuously build that growth. And OTT is very similar in that space. We want to make it a continuous, very strong piece of the puzzle to push more lead gen into the funnel. Awesome. Thanks for that, Carrie. Well, folks, that looks like that's all we have for questions here today. Again, if you are a Blue Corona client and you do still have questions or maybe you, you, you think of them later tonight, um, feel free to email your account manager or, um, account manager, excuse me, or email, email Carrie at cwheeler at bluecorona.com to learn more about OTT advertising. And again, if you're not a Blue Corona client, we'd be happy to ha start the conversation with you about how we could help you increase your leads and sales. Thanks, everyone. We appreciate you joining today. You can expect a recording of this webinar to be sent out as well if you want to revisit it. But we appreciate you joining and have a great rest of your week.